You're listening to Sorry for My Behavior, a man dancing production. I'm Mark. Episode six. Press play. Yeah, we're recording. Oh, we're rocking and rolling. Hey. Episode six, man. We're live and active in the woods. <laughs> in, in the woods. Once again, we're outside in nature. Nature. Nature feels good. It smells great. It looks great. It feels great. I'm in a tree right now. Oh, Tiana's in a tree. He I'm on the tree. is on the tree. Steve is on the tree. Leaning on the tree. And You're where, listening where, where to are, Sorry where for My Behavior, we? a man We're dancing watching. production. Sorry for My, my Behavior. I'm Mark. Episode 6? Seis. 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 We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Steve! Otiano, how has your week been? Man, it's 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 uh it's been an interesting week. You know, there's ups and downs in everybody's week. I feel like mm-hmm. so just to complain about mine when it well, isn't really the point of anything my pod in the podcast or anything. But it's you know with the ups, I really enjoyed the ups, the the downs. You know, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna say it. I enjoyed the downs too because the downs uh they they uh they they you know get a new perspective on life. You get you get challenges in your life that kind of help your brain grow. And at the ripe age of 24, I'm about to be 25, and my frontal lobe is about to develop. Oh, I and didn't know about I didn't know about frontal lobe until I was already 27. Oh fuck, yeah. Dude. That, well, I mean that's kind of good. That's good because my mindset about it is is I have a I, I know this is not the case, but I I figured when I turn 25, mm. like it's just gonna like teleport in my brain, like it automatic, like it's not gonna just like sprout it's just gonna just be there everything makes sense now yeah everything's just gonna start making sense at 25 is what i'm thinking even though i know that's not gonna happen by any means necessary but if i go into thinking that maybe when i turn 25 it'll it's like a placebo effect i i already don't really know where what what we're on about then we'll cross it out the way just know at 25 you get a a a frontal lobe and it teleports in your brain Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, which also frontal lobe, frontal lobe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Frontal Cause, lobe. Cuz cuz you know, it, it it grows. You get it starts growing at 25. But I in my brain instead of growing. I thought it stopped growing. Maybe yeah, maybe it is fully developed. I think that's 25. when the yeah. Maybe Where I've the been, idea was I remember learning that if you smoke weed when you're like 14, 15 a whole bunch, I'm cooked. Before your frontal lobe is developed, like that's when you really deal with the paranoia. I'm cooked. I'm so cooked. It's fine though. Yeah, and it's like I know people that started smoking weed after their twenties, right? Like in their twenties, right? And they don't deal with the paranoia at all. I mean, like they probably do, but like not the not the like CIA. Wow. You're gonna lose your mental capacity. Wow. Paranoia. Wow. Well, that's and a scientific fact, I guess. I mean, and you heard it here because this is a scientific podcast. Scientific for my best bros. Scientific for my best bros. Also, uh, scientific for my bros. Scientific, not not just the best ones. Well, because it's if, if it's SFMB, scientific oh, for so my for my bros. For my brain. For my brain. I like brain better. Scientific for my brain. Scientific for my brain. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, this is a, probably a good place to start uh, talking about the mental health stuff because we left off last week with mental health being the cliffhanger. Right. So I think that I think I think uh, that was a good segue because it all has to do with the brain anyway. Lobe. You know? Lobe. Lower lobe. You know, it's weird. Before we get into it, can I just get one thing off my chest? Yeah. Uh, somebody's told me, and I don't know why this bothers me, but somebody told me they say rough instead of roof the other day. And it really grinds my gears. And, you know, there's no there shouldn't be any right. There's no right way to say it at all. But rough i just don't see where you get the use from you know I feel like rough. have you ever heard somebody say rough instead of roof i've heard roof yeah yeah but it's that's i mean that's that's it i mean that's the same thing rough what did i say you said like a dog well that's how it sounds like to me rough. that's what it sounds like to me you see it's just weird it sounds weird when you say it like that right well east coast we're roof 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 i'm roof i feel like that's roof are you roof I like the more English bent on it though, which is probably r- roof. Roof. Up on the roof. I'm like, oh, oh, but see, they don't even have a, they don't even have that. I mean, they, the, they have the accent. They do that no, they say up on the trolley. Oh, on the tr- on the trolley. They don't have roofs. They got up on the. Let me see. The only things I can do in that are this is gonna this is gonna fuck everything up. So before I do, 
Um, I'm sorry for my behavior. Um, bottles of water, ghetto parties, and box of chocolates. Yeah, dude. I stole that from somebody. His name is Dashy. Shout out to Dashy. Um, but that's all I can do in that accent. It's back to back to back to uh, mental health. Hey, man. Uh, I believe that everybody should focus more on their he- mental health before we say anything. I, I feel like mental health is gonna. It is is definitely booming right now. Were you looking at me when you said "Hey, man" or the camera? I think both. Could you? Because if you went "Hey, man," that's a good mental health section part. So, "Hey, man." Hey, man. We hope you're doing okay with mental health. I, I we both do, because it's 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 something that's booming right now in the in the culture, which uh. is which is great. I feel like and men's what, health what, too. How, how, what what do you mean by that? What what specifically? Well, I mean, with just with everything becoming more digital and, you know, the world becoming more online. Yeah. You, it's just brought to your face and more attention towards mental health. I don't know if... if just you see more of it. I see more. Unless, like, it's... Like, conversations. You see more people having conversations around it or you see more... Just a- everything. Everything. A- conversations about it. Every Like, everyone I know has, like, a therapist. Most of the people I know right now have a therapist. I have a therapist. I have this thought around the current state of the whole mental health stuff and i gotta share it with the world you gotta do it go ahead and do it uh well it's something like this this is the first time in our culture where we have a larger understanding of the psyche of psychology of what it means to have mental disorders meaning a lot more people are at least aware of stuff like that right in our culture in a way that hasn't happened before what it looks like to me is everyone is just sharing their knowledge about mental health, assuming mm. that that knowledge is just going to help the person. Yeah. Forgetting about the fact that, like, if you're a person that might need to deal with their mental health, you have to recognize first that it needs be, needs dealing with. Right. And what I mean by that is, like, all right, I think we've reached a point where just because we have a lot of knowledge around mental health right now in the uh, uh, current sphere of shit. Sphere. I like that. I'm sorry. It doesn't seem to have really helped much. No, it hasn't really done much, has it? I think it's the application of it, or at least the attempts. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Well, uh, well they say that you know the first step to uh, re- uh, solving a problem or no, are, 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 are recovering from a problem yeah. is knowing that you have a problem, right? Oops. So we so we know we we know that like you know mental health is a is a is a something to deal with. Yeah, something to deal with. Yeah, something that we need to focus on. Maybe what it is is I think it's just all right. A lot more people feel like they can now diagnose themselves with things and say, "Well, I have this problem, therefore." Right. Right. Maybe that's why it seemed like it hasn't helped. And I don't know why I'm so bitter about this. Uh, why do I seem bitter right now? I don't think you seem bitter. I fucking hate it. I <laughs> well, that was kind of bitter. <laughs> was I'm not, I was I was that was that was bitter. Yeah. But I don't think you seem bitter. No, I think what you're saying is 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 that it's cool that we have a bunch of information on mm-hmm. mental health, right? And it's cool that we're we're now accepting the idea that it is a problem that we need to deal with. Mental health, stating that mental health is a problem, but we haven't take the steps forward to 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 better ourselves maybe is what you're saying and if that is the case i i, I kind of agree with you we could be doing yeah. a lot better but at the same time at least trying is you know like that's that's at least the least you could do is try or yeah and maybe try whatever that means for you maybe yeah. try is in, you go, maybe try is having a goal of going for a walk but hey you know what you got four steps yeah Okay, cool. Tomorrow, get five. Yeah. And if you don't, then that means you're still at four, I guess. Do you think that the comfortability and the not that's not the right word. What is the word I'm looking for? The well, I guess yeah, the comfortability of just knowing you have the problem and just saying, well, I'm just gonna deal with it how I deal with life. Well, it's way easier to use that as an excuse. Yeah. Just to to say, well, this is why this doesn't work for me. This is right. why it's hard for me. And what's a bummer is it's like, yeah, well, that don't really matter. And I'm sure I could come up with specific examples where it's like this. I suffer from depression, right? right? And I have dealt with really bad bouts of depression. However, it's kind of been on me for the most part to to find ways to get better. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, cool, I'll get the information, but reliance on in order that information to do good, I have to do something about it. Well, it's only going to be up to you in general. Yeah. Yeah, So so we talk way more about the, uh, the... this is what this is. This is what AD, 
ADHD is. This right. is what depression is. And these are the symptoms. And maybe go see somebody and have a therapist. It was like, cool. Yeah, have a therapist. But also we should talk about the fact that there's are behaviors right. that you can do in or that are proven to work to get better. You can re you can re recode your brain in a sense. I mean, it's an analogy, but you can really like you said there's behaviors that you can do to help yourself out. Like you just got to all you got to do the information's out there yeah. to just research. All you got to do is just proactively do the research yourself. That's what I think mm -hmm. that's I think I'm finally understanding what you're saying cuz just 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 saying that get, just going getting a therapist or just saying hey like hey, I have depression cool knowing that you have depression is great right not saying depression is great knowing that you have depression is great but mm -hmm. why but having 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 the thought of well i can't really do anything until i get a therapist or my, the therapist i've gotten hasn't really helped me we just don't see they don't really see my problems or yeah there's like so that. many people it's like oh i gotta find a new therapist well yeah. they're not working they're yeah. not working it's like well cool it's you like I, I, I get therapist. it and i'm not i'm not shitting on therapy i this is you know, talking with people, talking right. with people that you trust and right. talking with people where you feel like you can be honest and share your stuff with right. seems to be more of a goal you should have with everyone in your life. Right. But I get that it's hard and it's difficult. So I'm not I'm not chastising. Maybe the pa the bitterness is coming more from a passionate state because because you want to take a little pause. What was that? I I don't know, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know what that was at all. But it was loud, and it was an aircraft of some sort. That calm, yeah, that calmed me down. Yeah, that <laughs> that calmed me down. You for sure did. That was a lot. You know what? Um, you know what? What, what? What? And here's what I'll say: is this, and I'm gonna say it because. It's definitely on my mind. And what has been really helpful for me in the last several years sorting through my own mental health has been finding practices that I can implement that are easy, like five minutes of stretching at night before I go to bed. That's easy. Mm -hmm. I can do five minutes of sitting on the floor and moving and call it stretching. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is doing it every night. Because mm -hmm. that five minutes will eventually turn into ten because, you know what, ooh, I found this, and maybe I stretch here now or that, and then it'll grow. Or, hey, I am I am going to... Uh, hey, 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 hey. What? Right there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a big boy. That's a big old snake that's right there. A, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a dangerous snake, my guy. Um, that's what we like to call here in North Carolina a copperhead. Now we have two decisions. Taking first of all, take the picture for sure. All right, so here we are. This is in the middle of the podcast, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. Okay. So this is. I don't know if we could see this here. That is definitely a snake. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a, that's I I know what snakes look like. <laughs> I've never seen nothing like that. Really? Uh, no. Yeah, that's a. I'm like ninety percent sure that's a copperhead. And if that is a copperhead, we should definitely move from this area. Like, are there more coming? No, 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 no. That's just a very dangerous snake. That that snake could kill us. Should we? Uh, well, yeah, but we I'm should, fine. We're, like, I'm we're not in a stressing. Tree, yeah, you know, snakes can climb trees, but I'm not stressing about him at all. I like the way he looks, Ricky. R this is the first time I actually seen a snake out here. First of all. Second of all, uh, Ricky's Ricky Ricky uh, Ricky's enjoying his day right now. So this is an important lesson, folks, because snakes, uh, you can find them out in the forest. You could find them in your physical life, and you can also find them in your psyche. And a snake that you could find in your psyche is, let's say, deceit. Ooh, big old snake. That's probably the copperhead I've dealt with most in my life. Not all copperheads are the same. Not all copperheads are the same. And you're going to encounter different snakes, and sometimes they're going to creep up on you. Like Ricky just did. When you least expect it. So what, what we're interested here at talking today. Mental health. Yeah. Mental, that ties right See, into it. See, because 
you might not know when you're lying to yourself. So if you think, if you're going this, hey, my mental health is really good right now, it just just uh, uh, P- Planchard and friggin' Donatello, they're just being assholes, and they're making my life hard, so screw them. It's like, well, then you're probably lying to yourself, because if your mental health is good, you are not going to harbor resentment towards Planchard, Donatello, and whoever the else I said, just because, <laughs> just because they were late to the party. Right. If they're late to the party, leave, leave them be. It's still a party. I uh I I dude that was beautiful you know it that no nothing no, practically what he's saying here is that um nothing anyone does could really affect your day if you let it you can let that anything that happens to you not affect your day if if Sandra on the road is being a dick and cuts you off let's just say she doesn't hit your car it's up to you to decide what you yeah. do with that anger it's tough because sometimes in the long run maybe maybe what happens is your car gets hit yeah and sandra ruins it you right. know and but what happens is downstream maybe your car don't work anymore and it doesn't get you to the job that day but maybe the job that day has fire right maybe the right. job that day has fire and uh a lot of people are trapped in the office and we don't like that see that's the thing is we don't want that to happen <laughs> but, but so, th- so but then you could surmise that maybe getting hit by sandra yeah, was a was actually good. A good thing because you don't want to you don't want to burn in a fire. No, in your and, job. and you don't want to get angry at good things. No, why? Yeah, why would you want to get angry at solid things? So anger is definitely something to think about when it comes to mental health. Snakes are something to worry about right now. I think. Yeah, I. You know what, man? I, have, I don't know. Should we pause? We should do the thing. We should do an audible. Check this out. And we're back. Okay, no snakes here. No snakes at all. At least that we can see. If we do see them, they wouldn't come from the water because we don't have those snakes here. Water moccasins. Well, we, we do, but not here. Not Which water moccasin is a weird name because moccasins are nice and something to look forward to on uh, on Christmas Eve night. Correct. What, what, uh, <clears throat> uh, is it bad that I don't know what a moccasin is? Water moccasin is a is a deadly water snake. No, I know that, but what is a what is a moccasin? Uh, do you know UGG boots? Yes. Do you know like the small version and they kind of just look like nice slippers? Mm-hmm. And yeah, they're kind of also shoes. Yes, I am. Hippies there. will wear them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Hippies. Yeah. Yeah. Moccasins. Moccasins. Oh. It's like it's probably like some leather. Oh, or I it's know like what a moccasin is. Oh my god. Native no, American so. or Indian stuff. Yeah, I know what that is. Just wasn't familiar with the word. Well, I guess this all kind of ties in, you know. Yeah. We have we have we we, we have an episode talking about mental health on the way over here because you know we're not we're not. Steve, you're not Steve the crocodile hunter. No. You're 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 Steve MD mm-hmm. man. And you're you're we're not we're not we're not wrangling down alligators, you know. Not for us. We're we're just not I like snakes. I me and Ricky had a great conversation and I was like, all right, we're probably gonna go head somewhere else because we don't know if the next one's gonna be as cool as you. What he may have been doing is just coming up on us being like, Hey, warning, this is this is where I am. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think that's what it was. I looked up uh Copperhead on the phone on the way here and it is not as deadly as I thought it was. So just to correct myself for the internet out there, I know now that copperheads aren't as crazy as people say. That was, also, that was wild. Dude, I, also the name of a copperhead is like... Copperhead. Like That's like, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but to me that automatically sounds like... Well, here's probably why. It was probably back in the day when there were prospectors looking for copper, and they were like, <laughs> they were like, that looks like copper. And they'd be like, oh no, it's a snake. And no, then yeah. goes, <laughs> <laughs> And so then... <laughs> yeah. So the the it's like then then when they're that's a boat being wrangled okay. up right now. Then when they're out pro- prospecting, it's like, uh, hey, is that copper or a copperhead? Anyways, um, back to uh, back to the main subject. Back to mental hand. health. Yeah, that that like I said, that ties in because you know with with the way people fear snakes and with the fear around snakes, people maybe not have, might not be able to see a snake in the wild and look at it and be like. Oh, he's trying to kill me, you know. Like I, I, that, that's something that I knew for a fact that that guy Ricky wasn't there for us. He, he was, was just—he was looking proud. Yeah, he was—he looked happy to be there. He, he looked—he looked excited for us to be there. You saw his little head. He—he he stuck. He stuck it up. You know what's cool too? Uh, audience didn't see this, but what we did see is that as soon as I started talking about snakes in regards to mental health, he—he he left us alone. Ricky did start leaving us alone as soon as he started talking about snakes. I think we just captured the whole moment. 
now we have a whole new audience to bring into this. Yeah, we could talk to the new audience about reptiles. Yeah. And yeah, Wait, yeah. snake is, is a no. Is a snake a reptile? Yeah, yes. Okay. Cold, cold blooded, cold blooded animals are all all usually usually uh, reptiles. Cold cut, cold cut, cold clean. Yeah. So, uh, with another, I feel like another subject into mental health, man, that is actually also booming just as well as mental health as a whole is men's mental health. You know, mm. we have a whole month now for men mental health awareness. I don't know which month it is. I'm not going to lie. Shiley should have done the research and the homework to do that. But I think it's November. Only because there's a thing called Movember where people grow mustaches. And I think it's for dudes who don't normally grow mustaches but to but to grow one and then it's for mental health. Well, well I'm going to disagree, but I have a reason to disagree why I know it's not November. Yeah, I'm on board. Um is because I'm pretty sure we just passed it. Like I'm almost like 80% sure that we uh passed it this past like couple months i'm thinking like it's july i think it's july i'm like i'm like pretty sure it's july let's put now. it to the audience hey does men's mental health month come directly after pride month let us know that would be awesome i wonder well I, and and that and that brings up another point to what you were saying earlier man is that like you know we uh we have we have all this research on mental health men's mental health and how it and how it affects you know the world the knowledge of it but we don't really do anything with it i myself is one of the are one of those people who really don't do a lot with this information i i know i have like some mental stuff going on like i know like i i could probably consider myself depressed and have a lot of anxiety but i instead of instead of going to a therapist which is not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing it's just something it's that a I it's do. a it's a thing to do that can produce results yeah it's a thing exactly I, I tend to go out to places like this, you know, out in nature. Yes. Uh, enjoy myself. Yes. Uh, enjoy me being alive, surrounded by nature. And it really calms me down. Yes. Having conversations with people, friends. Yeah. Calms me down. You know, I feel like those my, things. My hot so. take about therapists is that it's you're paying somebody to, f- to, to, to feel like you're now allowed to be as honest as you can be. And and that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Uh, or it's a thing that hopefully is good for you because sometimes therapy, for some people, I've heard horror stories about therapy, but that's fine. So I don't know about therapy. Anyways, I know I've done therapy. I've, I've been a part of it. What was I talking about? What I was going to say was uh, you can also learn how to be honest with yourself and other people without having to pay anybody. Correct. I also firmly believe that. I, I have a... I have uh, a similar idea. It's funny. I know we didn't talk about but we didn't talk about how we feel about therapy beforehand. So it's just funny to see that our our uh, ideas about it kind of line up. You know, I'm the same. I'm the, I'm kind of the same way. To me, it just kind of seems fake that I'm paying somebody to learn about me. Like just the transaction in itself. And I've I've had people explain it to me in ways to where it, it shouldn't feel like that. And I totally understand. But it's just hard for me to open up to somebody a that I just first met mm. and b I'm paying to practically be my friend well i i think of it more like this you know if you're out of shape physically it's it's a pretty common practice to go to a physical trainer and pay them money so that they can guide you right uh same thing with a nutritionist if you're if you got some money and you you need a better diet plan you can go to a nutritionist and pay them money if if you really struggle with mental health you can pay a service of someone who's just able to guide you through those things right so you know and in the same way you can pay someone to do the meal plan maybe the meal plan sucks maybe the meal plan does suck maybe the meal plan's great maybe it's good but that's what paying for stuff is it's all about finding out yeah finding out if it's going to work out for you or not i've never really done that route uh and which is fine i've done it a couple times and it's allowed me to cry in some very good uh, for some very good things and i would like to do it i think i don't have health insurance and uh that's probably a big <laughs> But yeah. health insurance will happen. It will be nice. Do you do you, do you not feel that like maybe? Because I understand what you mean uh, by paying a nutritionist and paying like a physical, uh, th- not therapist. What what is it? Physical trainer. Physical trainer. PT. Uh, do, do you not feel like Personal maybe trainer. those are kind of lighter hand subjects to pay somebody for than to open up about yourself? I feel like. Cause no, I think it's all the same thing. Really? I really do. I, I I think, you know, there's this idea, I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, it's like the body and mind are connected. Right. I, I'm more inclined to believe that they are the same thing. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I just kind of agree just 
Oh uh, no, I kind of disagree because sure. Uh, to me, it's just it's just something that like you know I have a lot of thoughts in here. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things. You know, with the with my frontal lobe fully developing and whatnot. There's just a lot of different ideas going on in here. And just spill that all to somebody seems like a little. I feel vulnerable, and the reason why I feel vulnerable is because you know everyone's known not to trust everybody you meet in the world. It's mm-hmm. not like me the lack of trust for this person. It's just the lack of the lack of knowing what's going to happen at the other side of me telling this person like my information. Nothing bad well, could happen. Yeah, but it's that fear of of unknowing. Yeah, and I'm and I don't I don't. I don't feel like that's a service where I should be able to, where I should, you should have to pay, you should have to pay your, your therapist, first of all. I'm not saying a therapist shouldn't get paid. I'm just saying it's something that I feel kind of weird doing because it doesn't seem right. Not saying the therapist doesn't seem... Just that you, you're saying the whole dynamic, there's something rotten with it? Not even, not not rotten. It just doesn't seem genuine. I feel like once you add like well, certain sure. things... sure. So let me share with you my experience. One of the times I had done therapy and when I was in a really bad way, I you know, I, it was like one of those I'm calling crisis centers and whatnot. Right. And I got somebody on the phone and, and we had a voice, uh, one of them, phone, the Zoom... Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting, which, yeah, which, and, you know, I, I'm not a fa- I really have kind of not been a fan of it. And even then, there's th- things that he's telling me of, like, well, maybe you should, have you done this? And it's like, have you, you should, there's this guy, Dr. Wayne Dyer. It's like, I've fucking, I, I've read all of Dr. Wayne Dyer. I've read three books and listened to four. You know, you should do this. And it's like, I've done that. I do meditating. It was as if he was telling me these things that I already know, and I probably know more than him. Mm-hmm. But what happened as a result, was the fact that I made that phone call made me feel better. Really? The fact that we had an interaction made me feel good. And it wasn't the therapy. It was the fact that I chose to do something about it. You initiated your self-healing. Exactly. So I think maybe to help you with that hot take, some people might need that up front. Right, for sure. You, you Because it's, all, it's, it, it's really not about it. True, because it's not really about... Um, what they're gonna do for you? It's about what it's gonna help, how it's gonna help you in the experience. Yeah, it's just hard for me to get out of that mindset, you know. Of um, same. Of me not, I just I I if something nice, it's not like I said, it's not rotten. It's it's more or less. It feels once you add money, it just doesn't seem like money and um, health, mental health should be involved. But in order for people to make a living and to actually really pursue it, money uh, sadly has to be a part of it. So. Um, well, at least within the current structure of the American healthcare system that we live in. Correct. Correct. And I just, uh, but uh, I, I also no one's going to want to agree with this, and I don't even really want to talk about it because it's not my place to. Except I'm talking to you about it, and now everyone. Uh, but there's enough information, and if you practice the art of learning to discern truth against falsehoods, and that is a very both individual thing and a crowdsourced thing, kind of tough. Uh, if you are able to sift through things that work for you there's plenty of avenues constantly filtering through our phones and through youtube the challenge is choosing to watch that stuff instead of the next cartoon you know or or the next stuff in that so it's like even if it's infinitesimally small the choice to take in some information around that stuff is on you right true no very true like it's up to you at the end of the day to better yourself it's up to you to to take the step forward and and in order to help get there i think sometimes it's just acknowledging the problem and it's also good to like maybe telling somebody is you telling you you know maybe it takes you to tell somebody so that they can just be that mirror so that you can go oh telling you wasn't that bad well it's interesting because you know it's 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 funny how human beings work man you know after somebody gives their advice and like with some with some guy like say say like you were to give me advice about like um my day that i had you know like my car broke down or what's not and like i was feeling real bummed out and whatnot and you gave me advice and it, in return it made you feel good to give me advice and then maybe i take the advice or not it does not really matter at that point yeah you now feel better because you went out and helped somebody it makes you feel good and then that and then if that were happening to you it makes you feel better about kind of the world and 
in general? Yeah, I mean, I, I will, I'm the guy who will choose to compliment the store clerk on their nails or like a tattoo Same. or their hair just because like I like that it makes them smile and that Same. makes me feel good. So yeah, it is a selfish thing. Yeah. And a lot of things that are selfish aren't necessarily bad. Uh, like working on yourself and mental health. It Very gets toxic true. and bad when like you put yourself above everything else. I mean, you kind of like, have to. But yeah, so there's a fine balance. It's like, well, what does that mean? Does it mean your hedonic self? Does it mean all the things that you just like and feel good and that's it? Or it's or is it the self that is aiming to like be a part of of everything else right you know is it the you that wants all the snacks and the tv and the fucking thing just to feel nice for the night and right. feel like well I'm, I'm this is self-care right or are you gonna fucking uh do push-ups and log rolls and fucking call aunt betha because you haven't talked to aunt betha in eight years and maybe because you but you think about it all the time and you think about every once in a while it's like i should call them and it's like well maybe do Maybe do that. Take the initiative to You know, them. I am of this belief that we kind of have all the answers inside of us, and it's on us to have to deal with whatever shit is hiding that, you know? I know. I feel the exact same way. I feel like we all do have the answers inside of us. I feel like it's just for us to unlock it and see exactly what it can help us with. I've got a question. Go ahead. When was it that you started considering your own mental health and whatever that means for you? Like, how old were you? Uh, around, around, around the age of 12, I believe. Oh, no way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Probably around the age of, it was pretty young for me, but that's just cause I realized I wasn't like a normal kid. Yeah. I, I found, I found myself being extremely shy around anybody, but. What was it like 2008? 12. 2012. I was 12 in 2012. 2012? I was 11 and 12. And my birthday's in October. So kind of at the end of. Well, it's funny cause that's when I started becoming a little more aware of mine that, really like around 2012 well and i think it's probably because there was more info about it maybe i maybe there was just like a bunch of stuff going on you know like i had my my parents were doing too good and i was you know in elementary school health, my health wise or like, like relationship wise yeah relationship wise they were not doing okay there was just a lot of stuff going on at my house you know and um School wasn't, like, my always my best suit. Like, I never was the greatest at school. I'll go ahead and say that to anybody who knows me. I'm, I'm yeah. not, I wasn't the best uh, academic student out there. And it was in middle school, when, like, around middle school. It wasn't that you weren't smart. It was just, like, you just didn't do the homework. Yeah, I just didn't, I just didn't do the homework. I just, my brain was on other things, always constantly on other, thi Cause other the, things. Because the schoolwork also just seemed a little too easy to fucking even have yeah. to deal with. Yeah, and I'm just, it's just not stuff that I, you know, my yeah. brain naturally was like, okay, I don't think I'm ever going to use any of this information, so why would I ever try to, uh, yeah. like, put any effort into this? And then, you know, I got the stuff going on at the house, and me making friends was always just me trying to get people to think that I'm not awkward because I always was scared. I was scared. I'm, I'm still scared of people today. Like, I'm a very extroverted person, but I'm still introverted. And my brain is still introverted. Like, I, I still don't like talking to people. I'm an extremely shy person. First of all, you can come up to me and I'd have a pleasant conversation with you. But just know on the inside, like, there's a little part of me that's dying every time I have a conversation with I'll, somebody. I'll go ahead and say this. So I think that, the, like... That might be a definition of courage. You think so? Well, knowing that it's scary, knowing that it sucks, but still deciding to go through with it and attempt to have a pleasant conversation. Yeah. Like, that's what that is. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that, yeah, I guess it is courage, because I, I, I really don't, like, I don't like talking to people at all. It's one of my um, least favorite things to do. But I, I enjoy how I feel after I have the conversation, and I, and I enjoy how I feel about having the conversation because I know that's another step in me growing into being able to talk and communicate yeah. with people. And why that happened at 12 is because I noticed, at like I, do, I made a bunch of friends, first of all. I made a huge amount of friends like when I was 12. It's just, it was crazy because none of them, n n like it was just mindless stuff at 12. Like, you know, you're just a kid being friends, but it was like, I was thinking more deeper about it. Like I was, I was thinking of, worried about how people would act if I didn't enjoy what they were enjoying, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I would act like I was having a great time with whatever they were doing or whatever those kids were doing. And I found myself bored hanging out with a bunch of the friends I made mm. because it wasn't a bunch of stuff that I was into. That's such a weird, sticky feeling. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I and I there was no way of me getting out of it. There was really no way uh, of of me getting out of it because in my brain, I made that bed. So I'm going to lay in it. Yeah, you, know? you have to sort it out. Yeah. Well, it's like, and it's good. You, you had said something to me the other day about like, oh, well, that'll be, or probably just before, about like, oh, this will be a new challenge for me. Right. This scenario that might be tough in the future will be a good challenge for me. That was essentially what you were saying. So it seems like you've had that. Yeah, I've had this. I've had, I've had, I've had this for a while. I've had, because I, I don't know. I just like challenging myself in the fact that, you know, I know that if I'm not growing then, and I'm staying stagnant, I'm doing something wrong. So it's, it seems it seems to me that people that struggle more with the mental health area of life tend to have a little more of that awareness early on. Noticing that I think I'm thinking about things that the other kids aren't. Yeah. And I don't know how to describe it. Say it. Yeah. I don't know how to say it at all. It, it was just it was just around that time. And also not to sound edgy or like you know, stereotypical my emotions whenever i was 12 were really cut off like mm. more than the average kid who says their emotions were cut off i i was not i was not really an emotional kid there Damn, was a were lot you just of, like you were just like mad sad no i i was nothing and that and i was literally i would never i was Damn. i was i was kind of I, w- I wasn't really happy. I wasn't mad at all. Stuff would happen a lot. Like, a lot of things would happen around me to the point where I had adults coming up to me and, and like, are you, like, you okay? Like, are you sad? Like, this is a time for you to be sad and you're acting normal. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm fine. I was always fine because I would push myself into thinking that everything was okay or everything's going to end up being okay no matter what. And that's and and that's that's a skill. It, yeah, well, it's it's a skill, but in it's, some way, it, it it was like me more more or less uh, um, pushing. Oh, my ignoring. Emotions. Yeah, ignoring because yeah. I did obviously have emotions. That's a bad skill. But it was more or less the 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 pow the the power I had to not feel any of those emotions was so great as a child, man. I I really don't know how I did it. It was just a lot of things happening one after another and then just me at some point just giving up because i didn't like the i didn't like the the inconsistency of how i was feeling Mm. you know one day i would feel mad and one day i would feel happy one day i would feel sad and you're aware enough to be like this is confusing and frustrating yeah and now knowing the world i now know all those emotions uh, the the world that you know now the world that i know now is um has taught me to where i know that feeling every single emotion that you have is very worth it and you should shoot for that and yeah what an interesting concept yeah I, I i i just think it's important i think it's important for you to 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 explore your emotions and see exactly how you feel whenever you feel these emotions i i cried yes well, two days ago for the first time in happy or sad years overwhelmed with joy that's amazing. And sadness. That's also amazing. Yeah. You know? Like it was a combination. I feel like any time somebody has a chance to feel their emotions, they should really appreciate it. Like, really appre- like great- feel grateful about it because you have the ability that some people may not. From somebody who had lack thereof um, coping abilities to deal with emotions or healthy coping abilities mm. to deal with emotions, seeing people, um, just seeing people cry or see people just have this one yeah. denying one defying emotion Did coming ha- out of them is great have you ever felt that well i might not be able to feel all this stuff but i can think a lot about it yeah 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 for sure that's how i feel for sure because same it's like i i, I can consciously be aware of the emotions or kind of like logically understand them mm-hmm. but it has been categorically difficult for me to feel the sadness in the way that i'm crying to feel the anger is an easier one but it's but sadness i think is because sometimes it's like i get that i'm sad but i don't fucking feel anything yeah and that bums me out even harder uh it's 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 uh it's something that i've I've done in the past man whenever i really like had some depressing stuff happen to me i would always try to make myself more sad and more and more depressed which is a natural it's a natural thing that humans do but i remember like doing like doing things like this and trying to force myself just to cry or mm-hmm. something like that. It would never, first of all, it would never work out. I would never, anytime I tried to force myself to cry, it just never happened. It would only happen naturally. Yeah. But and when I, people's like, oh, just let it out. It's like, I can't. What do you mean? I can't do that. I, I just can't. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. I just can't let and it out. And it feels so good. And it happened during Patrick's show. That's good. 
like it was it was so intense dude it was actually really wild and it was just like so crazy that's good uh i have a question for you as well it's kind of on topic kind of half on topic sure, sure 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 why do you think uh humans try to escape reality in the sense of why do you think like you know us try to find a different world what, such as like that could be going into video games that could be doing psychedelics that can be watching tv that can be just something that's not your everyday thing i would hate to say i would hate for your answer just be to be just because humans are bored but no. I, I don't know if that's the case i mean this is one of those questions that you know deserve books i suppose mm -hmm. um but my first thought around why do humans seek escapism because all the all the <clears throat> big religions have it right in their first approach, which is life, you know, or the b b life is suffering. Like, that's ultimately what it is in the sense of, like, we are here and a lot of reasons or a lot of the way we know we are alive has to do with pain because it feels very real when things are painful. It feels inescapable. And a lot of the pain and suffering in our life is as a result of our own behaviors. And therefore, we realize that, okay, if I just get out of my own life for a second, whether it be through, first easy example is video game. This isn't me hitting on video games. I love video games. Right. I don't play them, but I love them. Uh, movies and this and that. It's like you form your own realities. But I think the joy of it is you can, you can infuse whatever reality you want into your own life right as long as it's not harming anybody it's a good thing yeah. uh, escapism to me doesn't feel too too much of a negative thing i think sometimes people will register it as that but right. like th in some sense this could be considered escapism I, I would i would believe so this is a form yeah but but i'm more interested in escapism that is actually not escapism it's i'm gonna i want to go directly into it yeah you want to dive head first into yeah it. instead of escaping the reality of my life I was waving. He's a good guy. Instead of escaping the reality of my life, I wanna I wanna get more into it. And then the scary thing is it gets more real. But the fun part is is you get better, or at least you have a better experience or a more full experience. Because most people that I know in their life that choose to escape reality have a very very narrow uh vision of what that reality is. Right. They and don't haven't really like fully Conceive yeah, but then but then you could even yeah. say it's because I decided to Do this thing that was a form of escapism that I found my real self, right? So that's what I mean by like books could be written on it uh, But I think humans are inclined to do escapism because We're here No, that makes sense. I, I the reason why I asked you is just it just to me it, It's just like it has, definitely has to deal with uh, mental health and the fact that that's just a way to escape, you know, like you said, what's going on around him. Um, one of my favorite uh, leaders in America right now, not a political leader. He's just the coach of a football team. Mike Tomlin, if anybody knows who that is, Mike Tomlin. He um, is the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he is known for what he says. He's known for... Um, a lot of the a lot a lot of the things that like he, he just moves people. He gives people encouragement. He gives people uh, excitement to what they do. He he can lead anybody into like a lava, and they would go with him just based off of what he says. Dude, I'm gonna have to look up this coach now. He's a he's in a like honestly, his words and the way he says things, it, it just it just motivates you. Do you look up motivational stuff? No, no, but really? kinda, yeah, no. I I only find it whenever it happens to be a part of what I'm into. Have and you ever seen like motivational style content and videos online? Yeah, and, and I hate them all. Really? Yeah, I hate uh, them all. Oh, I don't like them, man. Uh, it seems it seems it, I gotta be uh, I gotta be I gotta be into it. Like I gotta I gotta like you. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be. Do the compilation where Will Smith is having a is having a uh, quote from the from. You know, a uh, 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 pursuit of happiness from Sly Stallone's having a quote from this movie. From you know Eric Thomas is having a quote. From, I see, because I love that shit. Oh, you love oh, it? Oh my gosh! They will eat it up. Because I'm someone who really benefits from it. Like I need someone telling me, like, "Hey man, hey, man you got this. Yeah. It's gonna be a good day." Because yeah. when you wake up most days, not wanting to, sometimes searching for the thing that helps. I shouldn't say I hate him. 
I, I do. I, I do. No, I, I, I love your take on it. I'm not saying I'm pushing back on what you're feeling around it. No, but I, I take back what I said. I don't, I don't think I hate him. I think it's more or less like I, I don't, for most of them, it's, it's, I just don't, I don't see it. There's a couple of few that, that, that get to me and I'm like, yeah, but it has yeah. to be something that resonates with me. And it's hard for me to find something like that that resonates with me. For, yes. I, I think. No, I agree. And there's so many corny videos and there's, there's so many YouTube, uh, 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 channels that just like steal other people's footage and the motivational space is so like you could just i will produce say a bunch of content that is just corny and only serving your yeah anyways i uh, will s- i will say that uh sometimes i do tend to follow things that like I, I i dislike but i know that i dislike for the wrong reasons so i follow it anyway such as you know, motivational quotes on uh, one of my media pages, mm-hmm. uh, social media pages. I follow this account that's called Successful Owner, and it's all they always post like it's not somebody saying something; it's just like words. Yeah, I like it when it's nobody saying it, and I and I like it when it's just like words that are just written. Well, because then you hear it in your voice. Yeah, exactly, and it just it just hits me a lot harder. Oh, I like that. So 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 I, I do I do tend to every now and then I I I'll, I'll catch one. I'm like, damn, you know, like that's that's good. That's deep. That that's deep. That is deep. Yeah, I've always felt like. Anyone who would always show that my friends that kind of stuff, they would just always register it as super corny and uh, and just like, nah, man, it's all right. Back but like to, me, I'm like, all right, but I love it. But anyways, back to uh, what I was saying, man, about uh, Mike Tomlin. He has this quote that that kind of fits into uh, what we're saying. He says he doesn't ever seek comfort. I mean, matter of fact, he he lives to be uncomfortable. He lives in uncomfortability, which yeah. I feel like is a strong, really strong quote because. Uh, what I take from it, at least me, I take that y- you're not growing unless unless something's uncomfortable. Yeah. So if, if your goal is to grow, why do you always seek comfort? Why do Why do people? Because like it's it's comfortable. It's comfy. You know, you don't really have to try hard at being comfortable. The best comfort tends to meet you when you've gone through a dis uh, an uncomfortable situation. Exactly. Where it's like. It's like the shower at the end of a day after a long, like yeah, hard yeah. work day. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. mm-hmm. I think sometimes people just see comfort as their main frame. Yeah, and yeah, if they're uncomfortable. They're not living happy. But I feel like if you just take, if you if you just take a second, and it's the same. And that's honestly one of the way. That's the reason why. One of the reasons why I I seek having conversations with people because it always makes me feel uncomfortable. And ever since I heard him say it, I'm like, I must be growing because I am. Every conversation I have with somebody, I'm growing, I'm growing my brain. I'm making myself more comfortable around people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, ha- I don't have it figured out like most people, but, um, or I don't have it figured out like most people. Yeah. Um, but we're figuring out together. But we are figuring out together. Hey, man, this is a mental health episode, and we're out on, we're out in the the nature, and it's got me feeling really relaxed right now. I feel really good. Feel good? I feel good. You know that I would now. I feel good. You know that I would now. So good. So good. So good. So good. I got you. That's a good place to end it, probably. Yeah. Why not? Thanks for watching.